Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So today's video is another very special one because I'm going to be showing you how I made the dress that I wore to my sister's wedding last week. I was so excited when my sister Keely told me that I could make my own dress for her wedding because I knew it would be such a fun project. I've not really made much evening wear before, so I thought it would be so fun to try and figure out and work on. So let me show you what the dress looks like. So this is definitely the most sparkly project that I've ever made in my life. It is this solid sequin, long sleeved, very, very long evening gown. So the assignment for the dresses that my sisters and I and my brother-in-law's sister were wearing were for them to be gold sparkly sequins. And when I first heard that we were wearing gold sparkly dresses, the thing that came to mind was kind of like a 1940s old Hollywood type of look. So I thought long sleeves and a higher neckline could look really nice with the more bold fabric to have a really simple silhouette. So that's what I ended up going for. I used a McCall's pattern to make this project and it ended up not being nearly as difficult as I thought to sew on the sequin fabric. And the theme for this wedding was kind of like glamorous art deco 1930s inspiration. So I thought the old Hollywood look would fit in pretty well as well. So I was so happy with how the dress turned out and I can't wait to show you guys the whole process. Now, if you guys haven't been following me for a while, you might not know that my mom, my sisters, my grandma, we all so and I have four sisters so there's a large collection of us in my family um, so for the wedding my mom and my older sister made my sister's wedding dress and draped the whole thing and designed it it was absolutely stunning a very very beautiful piece so I have a little bit of footage of that as well and then we also made the bridesmaids dresses which were green silk velvet absolutely beautiful as well. So I'm going to share a little bit of that at the end. I didn't get as much footage of those because those were not my own personal projects, but I got to contribute a little bit. So I will show you guys that as well. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and get into this project and let me show you how this dress came together. So to make this dress, I'm using this beautiful sequin covered fabric and I have four yards of my fabric. This fabric is a little bit stretchy. It's a sheer mesh with the sequins done in this striped pattern over the top. And then for the pattern, I'm using McCall's number 8038 View C. It's a really beautiful, simple evening gown pattern. So the first thing I did was just to cut out my pattern pieces from the main fabric and to cut this sequin fabric, I'm using some scissors that are not my normal dressmaking scissors because I didn't want to get those all dull cutting through these sequins. So it was a little bit time consuming trying to cut through this fabric just because the sequins make it a little bit more difficult than a regular fabric. But I just started by cutting out all of the pattern pieces. Now to cut this fabric in the direction that I wanted it to drape, the back piece was actually a little bit too long, but I didn't mind that because I wanted to shorten the train just a little bit so it wasn't quite as dramatic. So I just adjusted the length of the train here. And then when I sewed the back panel in, which you'll see later, I just trimmed that to match. So here's a quick look at all of the pattern pieces. I have the skirt front piece and then two pieces for the back along with this little inset panel that creates the train. And then the sleeve pieces as well as the bodice back pieces and bodice front piece. And for the lining, I used some poly crepe back satin and I cut all of the same pieces out of the satin except for the sleeves. So with everything cut out, I was ready to get started with the sewing process. And the first thing I decided to do for this dress was work on the darts. So there are two darts in the bodice front and then two in the bodice back. And if you've watched my channel, you've seen me do this a hundred times before probably, but I'm just transferring the markings from the darts over with pins. And then I will pin the darts together and sew them on the sewing machine. Thank you. 
Now, when it comes to actually sewing on the sequin fabric, I did a little bit of research because this was something that I had never done before. And so I also checked with my mom and my grandmother who had sewn on sequins before. And there seemed to be some conflicting information. I think the technical proper way to do it is to remove the sequins whenever you are sewing a seam. But I found a lot of people online that said they just sewed right through the sequins. And so that's the method I decided to try just to save time. And I'm happy to report I only broke one needle in the process of making this entire dress. And the needle that I did break was a more delicate needle and it was just too delicate for this fabric. So once I switched over to a slightly more heavy duty sewing machine needle, everything was good. So if you are sewing on a fabric like this, I would recommend a more heavy duty sewing needle. So once I had all of my darts sewn for the bodice, I moved on to pressing the darts. And to press this fabric, since the sequins are pretty much just plastic, I needed to be really careful with my iron to make sure I did not melt everything. So I just put my iron on the lowest setting and I used a press cloth on the back of the fabric and this worked really well. So next it was time to sew the shoulder and side seams. So I'm just taking the bodice back pieces and placing them against the bodice front pieces with the right sides together and pinning along the shoulder and side seams. Now I am missing the clip where I actually sewed these together, but it's just a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. So now I'm moving on to the skirt pieces and the skirt back has darts in each side. So I'm going to go ahead and add those darts. There are no darts in the front of the skirt. So just the two in the back and I'm following the exact same process that I used on the bodice, just transferring the markings and then pinning and sewing the darts together.
And once I had the back darts sewn, I could place the back pieces together with the right sides together along the back seam. And then I'm going to pin this together between the markings on the pattern. And those markings are indicating where the zipper goes and where the inset for the train of the skirt will go. So I'm really only sewing in the middle of the back pieces here. And you'll see that a little bit more clearly here in a second, but I'm just going to sew between those markings so that I still have an opening on either side of the back piece. And then once I had finished that seam, I went ahead and pressed it open and now I can add the inset panel. So to do this, I'm going to start by pinning it on one side of that opening on the back pieces with the right sides together. And then I can go ahead and pin on the other side as well, just being careful as I look at the top of where this is inset to make sure that everything looks good from the outside. And with both of these sides pinned in place, I can take this over to the sewing machine and sew these seams, being really careful that there's no gap in the stitching at the top and then it comes to a really clean point so that everything flows nicely. And with the back panel assembled, I can go ahead and sew the side seams for the skirt. And there was so much fabric to work with here, I'm afraid it's not very easy to see what I'm doing, but I am just going to pin the back to the front with the right sides together and sew along the side seams with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Next, I'm going to go ahead and attach the bodice to the skirt. And to do this, I'm going to place the bodice against the waistline of the skirt with the right sides together and make sure to match up the back darts of the bodice with the back darts of the skirt so that everything drapes nicely. I'm just going to pin across the waistline seam and then I will sew this in place. going to go ahead and trim away any excess seam allowance from the waistline just to keep this from being too bulky at the waistline. The sequins can definitely add a little bit of bulk to whatever seams you're sewing, so I think it's a good idea to trim them. So I've gone ahead and repeated all of the same steps on the lining pieces. So I have a matching piece here of the lining fabric and I'm going to go ahead and pin the lining to the dress along the neck edge with the right sides together. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'll sew this on the sewing machine with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance just along the neck edge. Then I will trim the excess stitching and understitch this so that the lining will stay turned towards the inside of the dress. So now I can turn the satin lining towards the inside of the dress and I absolutely love this lining with this dress. I think it looks really pretty and it's also really comfortable to wear. And then once that's turned towards the inside, I'm ready to move on to the sleeves. So the first step to making the sleeves is just to sew up the sleeve side seam. So I'm just folding my sleeves with the right sides together and I'm going to sew this down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, because the sleeves were not going to be lined, I had to come up with a way to finish the seam so that it would be comfortable to wear and not scratch my arm while I was wearing it. So I decided to trim away the excess seam allowance and just use a little bit of bias binding around the seam allowance so that this would be nice and comfortable and smooth. Once I had attached my bias binding, I could go ahead and add the sleeves to the dress. So I'm going to pin the sleeve into the armhole with the right sides together, only through the outside dress layers. I'm not going to attach this to the lining yet, so I'm just pinning this into the armhole of the outer dress. Next, I'm just going to sew the sleeve into place using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then it was time to add the invisible zipper and I went ahead and did one half of it, but I thought I would show you how I get my zippers to match up. I sew one half of the zipper and then zip the zipper closed. And then I mark the waistline with a pin so that I can then match this point on the zipper on the opposite side. So you have both of the ends of the zipper and that midpoint to match. And this usually works really well to make sure that that waistline matches up. It can be so frustrating if you get that little like quarter of an inch difference between the two sides of the the waistline so this is a little trick that always helps me now I did make one fit adjustment here I needed to remove about two inches from each side of the bodice in the back so I just did that while I added the zipper and tapered it down to the waist seam and that was a really easy way to make that fit adjustment so now I am just closing up a little bit of extra fabric that was left in the back seam. I had sewed that point between the two markings before, if you remember, and my zipper was just a little bit shorter than recommended, so I am just closing that up here. So now to get a nice clean edge on the inside of the dress, I'm going to pin the lining to the zipper tape with the right sides together. And I am just going to pin this down towards the bottom of the zipper and then sew this in place so that when I turn the lining towards the inside of the dress, this looks really clean on the inside. So now this dress is fully assembled and fully lined and there's really just some fine hand sewing left to do to finish it up. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on attaching the dress to the lining at the armholes. And I want to be really careful that the lining covers up that seam so that this doesn't scratch me in the arm while I'm wearing it because again, those sequins are not the most comfortable thing in the world. So I am going to take my dress and fold the lining over the seam and pin that in place. And then I will just sew this down by hand.
So you can see here that this creates a really nice clean finish on the inside of the dress and it also makes it a lot more comfortable to wear. For my hems, I just sewed these by hand as well and on the sleeves, I just needed to hem these about one inch. I decided not to do any kind of finish on the edge of the fabric other than just turning this under because I was comparing my dress to the store-bought dresses that some of my sisters were wearing and I just kind of copied the finishes from those dresses. I'm also going to go ahead and hem the skirt. I tried this on and marked it to make sure that it looked good. And then I'm going to hem the lining by doing a double folded narrow hem that I sewed on the sewing machine. And then one last tiny detail, I added a hook and eye to the back of the dress and this dress was done. I am so happy with how it turned out and it was so much fun to wear for my sister's wedding. I think this is a piece that I will keep in my closet forever because it's so special and you never know when you might need a very, very sparkly sequin dress. The fabric was a lot easier to sew on than I expected and I also feel like making evening wear in general was easier than I expected because in reality, it's just a longer dress with a little bit of a different fabric. So it was a lot of fun to work on and I'm so glad I got to do this project for her wedding. Now over the past few months, I've spent a lot of time helping my mom and sister out with other projects for the wedding. Here I'm sewing on one of the bridesmaids dresses. I also got to help a little bit with the wedding gown and my mom did an incredible job of fitting this and draping it and creating the pattern. Here is one of the fittings with my beautiful sister Keely. And here I am sewing on the wedding gown, which was always over a sheet to keep it nice and clean and preserved. I did mostly just little interior finishings on this by hand and not very much of the actual creation of the dress, but it was so fun to get to be a part of it. And here we all are when we were getting ready on her wedding day. She looked absolutely gorgeous. Her dress is silk charmeuse and the bridesmaids dresses are silk velvet. My mom also made her dress from a vintage 1950s pattern. So there was a lot of sewing that happened for this wedding and everything came together so beautifully. I don't have the professional photos or anything, but I just thought I would include these few little clips that my sister got. And here they are at their first dance. How beautiful does she look? The dress was just so, so gorgeous and it was such a special day. So I hope you guys enjoyed that look at these dresses that were made for my sister's wedding. It's just so special to have all of these pieces that we made ourselves. And her wedding gown was just so, so gorgeous. And so her style, um, I just think it looked absolutely flawless. My mom and my older sister are absolutely amazing at creating designs and making things so beautifully detail oriented and professional. So um, it was really fun to watch all of that come together. And I was glad I got to contribute a little bit as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time here on my channel today. I will be back with another Christmassy vlog very soon and I will talk to you then. Bye!